Welcome to Mega Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk The Walking Dead Q&A 109. If you're new here, you can find the rules to participate down in that video description. And I want to jump right into this because I'm trying to get the Afterthoughts video uploaded uh, right after this, so stay tuned for that. But let's jump right into the questions with Casey West. Have you ever noticed the boat in the opening credits? What do you think it means? Yeah, that's a new uh, title sequence thing, or at least I think it is. I don't remember it being there last season. I don't pay attention to a lot of that because I don't think there's really much hidden there. I do believe that a lot of the sl slides are obviously uh, symbolism or calling back to the characters like Rick Grimes' Red Mach Machete, the Lucille Bat, his Python. I think the uh, Herschel's Watch is in there. Things like this that relate to the story and the characters. So with that said, I think that's just going to relate to a part of the story coming up. Now, because it's in the title sequence, I think that might actually become a an important part of the story. So I'm really curious. Now, with that said, I don't want to know. So if you know spoilers, uh, we are not here for that. You can hang on to them. We are not asking for any spoiler information. We like to speculate. Chan Chinek, you don't realize that you are actually only focusing on Dwight right there. What happens with Daryl then? Isn't it sort of logical to, th to think that Daryl would become pointless and unnecessary after that? What this person is talking about, the previous Q&A, 108, I talked about how I think it's so awesome that you have a character like uh, Dwight, who's a comic book character, getting his comic book look from an original TV show character. He's taken Daryl's vest, he's taken his weapon. Now, I know these are iconic to Daryl, but I strongly disagree with you. Taking away Daryl's crossbow and his vest does not make Daryl pointless and unnecessary after that. Daryl's going to have a clear story. Now, whether or not one of them or the other one keeps the crossbow or keeps the vest, that doesn't affect the story whatsoever. That's just the look of the character. Like I said before, give Daryl a friggin' shotgun. Let Dwight keep the damn crossbow. I do not really care about the weapons uh, as far as those two characters are concerned. I think maybe Dwight could give Daryl the vest back in a sign of starting to, you know, build a friendship, or maybe not. That's a very poor choice of words. But an alliance, a necessary alliance, you know? Uh, in this world, it's not black and white. It's not like, here's a piece of shit who killed my friend, I need to kill him. Sometimes you might actually need to align with people like that to take out a bigger threat. So, I disagree. I think you're only talking about clothing and weapons. I think the story that Daryl will have in the future is very different than the potential story Dwight will have. Dick Mosai. With the whole Dwight Daryl storyline, do you think we're going to get the same uncertainty like we did in the comic about Dwight and what he's thinking? This is, yeah, absolutely. Let me just say yes. This is one thing that I'm going to say. I love the way the actor Austin is portraying Dwight because even right now, I still feel unsure if they're going to give him his full comic storyline. I strongly believe they will. A, a, a big element. You comic fans know what I'm talking about, but the actor is doing such a fucking great job that right now I'm thinking, man, they're making him a bigger dick than I thought. Will they really, you know, give him that storyline? So yes, I think the uncertainty will definitely be there. I think for comic fans though, and you are pretty confident they're going to remix the storyline by keeping it somewhat similar, at least that one element. Yeah, you know, you could say, oh, it's predictable. Oh, I knew it's coming, but there is definitely that level of uh, uncertainty that uh, is definitely important that they're displaying through the actor's uh, range and the actor's uh, acting. <laughs> Moving on. James Jones. At what episode will Tara, Heath, Carol, and Morgan be back at Alexandria? Well, that's going to be different depending. Uh, I don't think they're going to show up all at the same time, but I will say that we are, what, episode four? Negan and them are coming for the first offering at Alexandria. Uh, Carol and Morgan are probably healing up, so around episode five, six, seven-ish, we should probably see either Morgan or somebody relay a message to Alexandria, and then um, what for Heath and Tara? It'll probably be this half of the season. I don't know if they would hold off on it. Uh, you know, they won't because it was in the trailer. Or no, we didn't see them back at Alexandria. I'm going to say the first half of the season, we will see them connect. Uh, this is one problem with the bottle episodes, though, is because it could be six episodes before we ever see what happened with Tara and Heath, you know? All right. 
Uh, Ryan Rabbit. Ronnie, I think after the first offering, Carl will have his comic storyline while at the Sanctuary either trade with Negan for Daryl or help Daryl escape. Do you think this is possible? No, not at all. I don't think that's possible. Not trading for Daryl. And I'll be honest, just seeing how they showed off the Sanctuary in the previous episode, I'm really doubting we're going to get Carl's storyline uh, anything like what it was in the comic. I'm really doubting it. If we, I'm not saying we're not going to get it, but right now I'm 80% feeling like we're not getting it. Joe Cool, do you think they will flesh out the point slash earning system for the saviors? Uh, for example, they, rece re they receive such and such reward for helping punish kill rebel groups, yada yada yada, and they divulge more punishments that have been implemented by Negan, and you brought up the fact that the girl told Maggie, I think it was, that she stole gas to go look for her boyfriend and she got her finger cut off. Now, here's the thing you have to keep in mind. She stole gas, which they probably have a lot of. They cut off her finger or fingers. Dwight stole hard-to-come-by, very expensive medicine. Negan said he stole all of it. That's why Dwight's life was on the line there. So, yeah, I do believe they, they will and they should. I think it's important to see how this community is uh, structured and how it works a lot more than what we've seen, you know, because I still feel like with the way Negan was talking, they might have like a little whorehouse set up where they can have um, an opportunity for women to earn some points and maybe sleep with Dwight. Like he says, Dwight's been a good boy. And then he tells Dwight, well, as long as they are willing, you know, I think that's very important information. And if that's the case, they might have a system set up like that, you know? Because I know right now fans are thinking that Negan's just a rapist saying, it doesn't make sense. He's going to let Dwight bang the chicks, but they need to be willing. They might earn points for that. It might not be his wives that he's talking about. It might be something different. That's why we need to see more, I feel. Dragon Ball Radian. Is it just me, or did Carol heal way too fast from being shot multiple times? Every time I heard about that in real life, they hadn't been able to get the bullet out. Yeah, what you're talking about is someone who has a bullet lodged. If she got a flesh wound on both her leg and her arm, they don't need to get a bullet out. That's where the bullet goes through and through. You can get shot like Daryl, and the bullet goes through and through. It looks like that's what happened with Daryl. In that case, it needs to not hit any arteries. It needs to not hit any bones. I think those are the two biggest things off the top of my head. If they hit any one of those, yeah, you're screwed because you can have splinters of bone, travel, hit an artery or a heart, lung, something shit like that. Uh, obviously, you have a shattered bone. Yeah, I don't even know what a doctor would do in a post-apocalyptic setting to heal something like that. But yes, they got incredibly lucky. This is the point where you have to kind of suspend your disbelief because we have Daryl getting shot in, I think, a place where it looks like he had a high probability of having a severe gunshot wound. That that went through, where did he get shot? Right here, that went through not only the ribs, because your rib cage is like this, the ribs on his back, but the ribs on his front. It magically missed everything it needed to be a flesh wound. Yeah, you have to spend, suspend disbelief. And for Carol, yes, that's extremely disappointing that she's up and moving and it seems like she's fine in just about a week give or take. I don't think it was longer than a week, but yeah, yeah. That's a moment we just got to suspend disbelief. I know a friend of mine was shot in the leg, and I tell you what, afterwards, I mean, it bruises, or at least maybe because of his situation where he was shot and, you know, but here's the thing, didn't hit any arteries, it didn't hit any bone, but his shit bruised up like a motherfucker, and it was not painful the moment that he got shot. He said it burned like hell. It was afterwards i think it was like the second day after it felt like everything was raw meat he said you know in that specific area so yeah you're gonna just suspend disbelief and keep it moving <laughs> anyway marilyn r do you think that jeffrey dean morgan's off-screen charm is affecting his on-screen uh, bad guy persona no not at all you look at a character you know, on screen, even though you love the actor playing him, you still get the vibe that he's a villain. I mean, some people are going to not get the whole villain vibe to an extreme because they love the actor so much, but what are you going to do? And I don't think it hurts the story at all, though. Craig Slingbot B. What do you think it's going to take for Rick to regain confidence and stand up to Negan? Men, I think Rick needs to see that he has the army he needs to take over Negan. Uh, other than that, I don't think it's really a confidence thing. I think it's a smart decision. It's more along the lines of it being logical. Like, this is going to be a big battle. This is going to be tough. We will lose people. But I need to know we will definitely win 
or most likely win before we make an attack. Or at least that's how I feel. Nicole um, Potts, Pouts, Nicole Pouts, <laughs> uh, Sherry or any of the other wives were to get pregnant, what do you think Negan would let them have the baby or I butchered that. I, you did it right. I butchered the hell out of that. Uh, yeah, you're basically asking would he make them have an abortion? I don't know. They never brought this up in the comic book. I can't remember if they did, even if they did it in a conversation. I do feel like uh, I know a lot of fans are saying that Negan's trying to get her pregnant or Negan tried to get her pregnant to get at Dwight. I don't agree with any of that. I personally at this time feel like that is a checkup. It's a routine checkup. He has these wives. They're having sex. It's unprotected sex. So obviously he ain't using condoms. I mean, it's pull out and pray from what it looks like. So it's just a checkup just to make sure she isn't pregnant. Maybe they have some medicine, you know? I don't know. You think they would have some morning afters or something? I mean, if that's the case, would she need to get checked up? I feel like it's just a checkup, you know what I mean? To make sure she's not pregnant. I don't think Negan's trying to have a kid with her, though. I've heard that, too. Dead edits. Do you think they will carry on doing each episode, focusing on one group, and then switch to a next episode, focusing on another group? Yes, they're called bottle episodes. Unfortunately, I think The Walking Dead will continue to do this. And I say that, and I know a number of fans are getting a little irritated hearing fans talk about disliking bottle episodes, but I'm starting to strongly feel that the bottle episodes are, are are affecting the ratings because you know what I'm hearing more and more? I'm hearing a maybe a casual fan base or a part of the fan base say, and don't say, oh, they're not real fans. That doesn't matter. What matters is the ratings. Are, are as many fans watching as possible because that's what's going to help keep the show alive. Now, I'm hearing more and more and more fans saying that, oh, this is an episode about Daryl or whatever. I don't need to see it. Maybe I'll catch up next week. It's not that important. And I think that is an important detail to understand that there's some fans that will know next episode's about Tara and Heath. I don't need to watch it right away. I don't care if it gets spoiled. I don't care if I see something on the internet. I'll wait till next week and I'll catch up before. That's important and I think a lot of fans are doing that because I'm hearing it more and more. Fans are saying, oh, that's only about Carol and Morgan. I don't care about those two characters or that storyline. Maybe I'll check out Ezekiel, who's his new character. But for the fans who were like, I don't really care about Tara and Heath, that might be a problematic episode. If they advertise that episode to be just Tara and Heath, I'm very curious to see what the ratings will look like. Um, anyway, I don't know. I'm not blaming the actors or the stories or the story overall I am saying I do be believe that some of these bottle episodes because the ratings fell to its lowest in the past couple seasons I don't know the details but I know episode three's ratings were very low uh, considering the other compared to the other episodes you know what I mean and I do feel like if it wasn't a bottle episode and we got a peek at at least the other communities a little bit like every other TV show does, pretty much, I do believe the ratings would have been better by millions, you know? Dominic Ambrosio. Ambrosio. What is Negan's real name? It's Negan, as far as we know in the comic. We don't know anything other than that, but it looks like that is his real name, not like a nickname. Eric Gonzalez. Do you think that the mid-season finale is going to end with Rick trying to assassinate Negan uh, and that the mid-premiere... Uh, will be the second lineup. Here's another thing. Angus McBride also asked, do you think season 7 finale will be, and this is comic book stuff, uh, the beginning of going to war, kind of like what the other person asked. A lot of people ask this. I'm scrolling through four or five different questions asking if we're going to get comic book spoilers here. It's nothing big at all, but it is a second lineup. I did a video on this, and there most likely will be a second lineup. There was one in the comic book. I won't give you any other information, but that second lineup is what brought us into All Out War, or at least it was the issue before All Out War. Now, here's the thing. With the second lineup and with everything you guys are talking about, if that's the case, that means that the... Uh, well, first off, this is something I did talk about in the second lineup video. I thought, man, how epic would it be if they start and end a season with a lineup so they can end it on a second lineup? And it would be a kind of a way to take a little uh, a little jab at the fans. Oh, you didn't like a lineup? Or, uh, yeah, the cliffhanger lineup at the end of season six? We're going to give you another cliffhanger lineup at the end of season seven. I don't know. There's just so much humor in that that I see. 
I just feel like it's so great. But story-wise, I don't know if that's the best part to leave off with the story. But I will say that if that is the case, they better move it along because we are getting these bottle episodes to the point where we're on episode four and we have so much to cover yet. We still need Rick to get introduced to the kingdom. He has no clue what's going on there. And I think that if they were to do it the way it is now, there's a couple episodes that might need to be uh, jammed in there that will have Rick meeting and then building alliances. And it all happens overnight. You know what I mean? Unless we get less bottle episodes later and they start covering more ground. With that said, at this point in time, I'm not looking ahead to the end of the season trying to guess what's going to happen. I always do that around the mid-season finale. I think that's a good spot to kind of tell where we're going to be for the season finale. So right now, I'm going to stick with, sure, the second lineup right before All Out War. Season 8 can be advertised as All Out War, the whole season, you know what I mean? Whether or not it will be the whole season, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying when they advertise the new season coming back. That's where I stand, and I can guarantee you right now, as the episodes roll on by and we get to episode 8, the mid-season finale, I most likely will change my prediction because we get more information. Anyway, I gotta run. I got a lot more videos to do. I hope you participate in the next one, and we are most likely, by the next time I upload a Q&A, we will definitely have 100,000 subscribers. All right, all right, I've been rambling enough. I'm gonna shut up. It's time for you to leave your thoughts, opinions, theories, suggestions. Leave it all down in that comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn. <sighs>